the metals are probably a really great place to to look as long as we hold support lines and and the seasonal lows come into play i think those are good plays going into next year But I think when it comes to the, the S&P and the, the stock market in general, uh, a lot of it is the U.S. dollar. The U.S. dollar has really been holding most assets back this year with due to high valuations. The dollar has come down in recent months, but the reality is it's still really high, probably far too high for uh, healthy ass risk asset markets. So I think that's helping us out a little bit as far as uh, the S&P goes. And also, um, a lot of it's just technical. If you look at a, a weekly chart, you can see that we're coming up against some really heavy resistance around the 4100 area. There's a couple of trend lines on a weekly chart that come in there. One is the downtrend line that started early last year and has uh, continued to hold through this particular point. And the other is there, on the chart that I'm displaying, there's a, a blue line and that dates all the way back to 2018. That was basically the trading pattern that the market had been in prior to all the COVID stimulus and all the government stimulus that pushed us up above that trading range. So that's going to be a really heavy pivot number. As long as the market stays below that, I think we continue to see some pressure. If we can find a way to get above 4,100, then that's actually pretty bullish. Fundamentally, I think there's definitely some question marks above the market. And so I'm not sure we can, we can do that without a little more turmoil. Normally markets do pretty well in November and December, but come January, February, they tend to struggle. And I think we're going to see that in the first quarter, the market has a tough time getting out of, out of the hole. Uh, I pay attention to the indices overall, not any individual sectors, but with that in mind, I think it's fairly obvious that the consumers are going more towards staples and, and away from discretionary items. And so I think that's played a part. And there is a really big disconnect between oil stocks and the oil futures market, which has been selling off for several weeks while the oil stocks have been going up. And that disconnect's unnatural. To me, it just says that investors are starving. They're desperate for a place to put their money. Oil stocks have worked. And so that's where they're, they're putting money until that stops working. That'll probably continue to be the case. So to be honest, I don't have a fundamental opinion on Bitcoin simply because I have a hard time um, finding the intrinsic value there. I know that the the technology for crypto is definitely valuable. I'm just not sure any one particular coin is going to make it through the the wash. I mean, we saw this in the dot com bubble. A lot of those tech stocks failed, and um, it paved the way for for other companies in their wake to do, be very successful. For example, a prominent example is uh, I think it was Pets.com failed, and now Chewy.com is thriving. So just because the certain coins are around today and being traded today doesn't mean those are the ones that are going to survive. With that said, as a speculative asset, Bitcoin is something that everyone wants to talk about and a lot of speculators are very interested in it. So I do chart it. I personally think that we have a sh chance of seeing 8,000 in Bitcoin and that puts us back down to a really long-term trend line dating back to 2019. And to be honest, I think that might be what it takes to, to wash out the rest of the week hands and, and kind of get the market on more solid footing until that happens. I'm not sure I'd be comfortable uh, speculating on the long side, but Bitcoin's a market that's full of surprises. So all we can do is take it day by day. Gold has been a very disappointing asset. And I, I know a lot of very smart traders and experienced traders that have had a hard time with gold and silver markets because they really aren't behaving the way you would expect them to in a war environment and in an inflation environment. Uh, but there, I, I believe that the U.S. dollar is what's really holding gold back, along with other assets. Like I mentioned before, stock market and treasuries are suffering because of the higher dollar valuation. But I personally think the dollar is in the process of rolling over. And if that is the case, that should basically unhitch the plow on gold and silver and allow it to move higher in sympathy to some of these fundamental stories that just haven't panned out thus far. So although gold's underperformed in 2022, I think 2023 is going to be a good year for gold and silver. In gold, the pivot number I'm looking at is about 1775. This is basically was the uptrend line uh, dating back to 2018, 2019. And it did break through earlier this year and fail, but we've, we're coming back and retesting that now. Generally, in, from a charting standpoint, previous support becomes resistance. So that 1775 area is now resistance on the way back up. And I'm also seeing some moving averages coming into line at around 1800. So if we can break above 1800, I think gold's got a good chance at retesting the old highs, actually going a little higher, 
maybe 2100 by some point next year. Another thing to keep in mind is the seasonal bottom for gold is mid-December. So seasonals are tricky. Sometimes they're early, sometimes they're late, sometimes it doesn't work at all. But most of the time, if you're looking for a place to get long gold, if you do it in early to mid-December, it's usually a, a good long-term position. Okay, how about on the silver front then, Carly? Are you as optimistic? You always say silver this, follows gold. It does. So silver is interesting. The silver chart is actually a little more constructive than the gold chart is in the short run. This is a daily chart of silver. And you can see that we've kind of broken a, a downtrend line earlier this month, actually uh, last month. And that so we're technically we're in a breakout phase. And as long as we hold above 2050 in silver, I think the path of least resistance is higher. If we can break 2245, I think we finally get what all the silver bugs have been calling for all year and just haven't been able to to make any progress. I think we get some a move back into the high 20s, maybe even the 30 area. Next year, yeah, this is gonna this is gonna take some time and assuming I'm right. And for this to happen, the dollar's got to roll over and I think that it will. So a lot of the, the dollar, there's a couple things working in favor of the dollar. Obviously interest rate differ, differential and the Federal Reserve members continuously talking the market, uh, talking treasuries down and talking the dollar up. But I think that a lot of that has already been priced in advance. And then we also had some flight to quality. The US dollar tends to be a quality currency. So when things are hectic around the world, people put money into the, the US dollar for safety reasons. So that I think has already played itself out. And if we look at a weekly chart here, the highs from a couple of weeks, well, a couple of months ago, were basically right up against a trend line. It temporarily poked out above it, but then it closed the week below it. And that was a very bearish signal in my opinion. And so now we're coming up against the, basically the area that the market broke out in 2022 with the Russian in invasion of Ukraine and all the Federal Reserve actions and all those sorts of things came into play. The dollar broke out of the previous trading pattern. And now we're coming back down to test that pattern. So the previous resistance is now support and that comes in at about 106. If we can get a weekly uh, close below 106, which I think is in the cards, it may not be in the next week or two, maybe it takes a month or so to do it. But once that happens, I think the ball starts rolling down the hill and we start making our way towards 97. And that would basically just uh, allow everything else to, to float higher. And we're talking about basically all asset classes, maybe not stocks right away. Those will be, that'll be the slowest or the last to respond, but treasuries, metals, copper, silver will all, will all benefit from that. The fundamental story for copper is pretty, uh, pretty compelling. I mean, copper is a, an industrial metal. The, there's a lot of uh, qualities as far as EV, EV vehicles. So a lot of the, the new green deal and, and that sort of stuff is going to help the demand for copper. Uh, the one thing that's holding copper back is probably the economy itself, which is showing signs of slowing down and the China story. But I think all of that eventually will work itself out. And so I think in the long run, anybody that's looking to play the upside in copper, probably look for some support around 350, maybe 330. Somewhere in that range should be a good long-term buying opportunity according to the chart. And I think the fundamental story supports that. Well, I agree with you. We've been hearing that for years and it just, uh, you know, copper fell flat and a lot of the metals did as well. But I think most of that was had to do with the dollar or the higher interest rates. So once we work out the interest rate uh, picture normalizing and the market's basically standing on its own two feet in regards to fundamentals and, and not being held back by a higher, higher dollar. I think that story finally allows itself to play out. So just getting back, uh, Carly, to your just some thoughts uh, from the Fed. Um, obviously, 50 basis points seems uh, in the cards for December. Any thoughts or speculation as to where their, their head might be at? You know, it's really hard to, the Fed has been extremely transparent. In fact, in my opinion, too transparent. It's almost like instead of just letting us know what their intentions are, they're actually talking the market into, into their narrative. And so I, I'm not a big fan of that. Um, so that said, I, I think that the Fed's probably made it pretty clear what they're doing and where their, their intentions lie. I'm just wondering if maybe they've done enough already, maybe even too much, and we haven't seen the effects of it. I mean, interest rate hikes take a long time to work the, their way through the economy, and we're starting to now slowly see the 
the results of their actions. And I'm just wondering if maybe they should be tapping on the brakes, but my opinion doesn't matter. So I, as far as I can see, they're full board ahead. Well, as I've mentioned in, uh, earlier, I think the dollar plays a key in everything. If the dollar continues to t behave itself and again, close below 106, I think that's kind of a green light to start putting money to work in just about all asset classes. Uh, I think treasuries are, are probably one of the better plays on the board because you get you get paid while you wait. You you earn a yield, which is the best we've seen in a long time. And if something does happen in the economy, something happens globally that shakes things up, you probably get some price appreciation as well. So I think that's probably the best play on the board for investors. Um, for speculators, I'd say the metals are probably a really great place to to look as long as we hold support lines and and the seasonal lows come into play i think those are good plays going into next year 